not look dead behind the eyes? Probably. Probably. Okay, so it is a brand new month. It is a new day. It is a new month. That's all to be said in the matter. But the beginning of a new month signals the end of the previous month, which means it's time for another wrap up. I swear the time is absolutely flying by. Like, I feel like April, it definitely did drag a little. Like, when I think about the beginning of April, when I first started, like, the Owl's Magical Readathon, that, that just feels like a, a different time. Like, I was going back over some of the footage from, like, my first week, and I just feel like that feels like so long ago. But also, I do feel like it's kind of flown by at the same time, so how can that be? How how do I feel like it's flew by but it's also dragged? Anyway, so let's crack on. I have my books here that I read. I didn't actually do it as well as I thought I might. I, well, I did and I didn't. I successfully read all the books that I wanted to read for the Owls Readathon. I got them all finished. I did finish my last book on the last day of April, but I think that's because I didn't have much to go and I was just kind of um, enjoying a few days without having to read anything at all, but I didn't actually read anything else. I did start an ebook. I read the first 100 pages of it. I think it was a, it's a 500 page uh, story. So I read the first 100 pages of it. So I was maybe hoping I was gonna like read that as well, but I didn't actually end up finishing it. I have I read it once. I read like the first 100 pages in one day and then I just never returned to it but I will get back to it eventually so it might be included in my May wrap up. We shall see. But anyway moving on to April. So the first book that I started and finished was a non-fiction book called Dangerous Women. The that lighting. Dangerous Women. <laughs> Dangerous Women. The Guide to Modern Life and it is by Claire Conville. Liz Hoggard and Sarah Jane Lovett. I, this was my book, was my Ancient Runes, which was to read a book with a heart on the cover or in the title and it took me ages to find a book with a heart on it. I thought I was going to have to completely change my, my planned career, which is, I chose the Seer career, which only actually had three prompts. Yeah, three prompts. And then I thought I'm gonna do another career so I chose the journalist slash writer career as well I thought that would be the two tie in quite well together if I'm a seer I can I can see into the future and I can write about it and write about stuff that happens yeah when I realized I just didn't have a book with a heart on the cover I thought I'm I didn't have a book with a heart in the title either I thought what am I gonna do because I did try to find books that I had not yet read rather than like rereading books and so that was a that was definitely a struggle but then eventually I did find it look at that there it is and it's on the back as well so there it is I did find a book with a heart on it it's a little little heart but a heart nonetheless this is a non-fiction book I've spoken about this quite a lot in my readathon vlogs it is basically like a lady bible it starts with like it starts with like the letter a and it works its way through the alphabet it's about like vice, <laughs> allergies, allure, alcohol. There was just a lot like, you know, it had it was like a it was like a dictionary, a lady bible. Different things, you know, just telling you, giving you advice, telling you, I don't know, giving advice and things like that. It referenced like icons like Meryl Streep and Anna Winter and David Attenborough was in there. So yeah, it was quite it was a nice little read. So that is my first, my first. I was so pleased I got this for Christmas for my friend. Thank you girl, because I needed that heart. Next up on my list, I'm trying to remember the order I read these in, but I don't think I can. I read Potion Study by Maria V. Snyder. This book was my divination. My mom is being so loud. This book was my divination, which was to put your put your TBR into order and then assign them all numbers. And then using like a random number generator, you were to generate a number and whatever number came up, you were to read that book. So I actually, I decided because I didn't have a lot of books left, I chose, I only had three books 
that I put in my generator. The first was the Hunger Games because I want to do a reread of this series before the new one comes out. Uh, Twilight because I also want to read that series because I've had the books for years and I've just never read them and I figured well seeing as I am running out of books to read and I've literally read almost everything that I own rather than going out and buying books just yet or ordering them online seeing as none of the shops are open uh, I thought I'd maybe work my way through rereading some books that I already have and reading books that I've had for years that I've just never read so I'm working my way through that but and also the third one was Potion Study by Maria V. Maria V. Snyder. I have the first three books in this series. I'm pretty sure there's more. There's like short stories, there's a trilogy with a based around a spin-off character, there's a spin-off based on a side character and then there's another three books after that revolve around this main character. So I have the first three. I have Potion Study, Magic Study and Fire Study. I've had them for years. I got them in like the works for like three for five pound. My mum is singing. Stop! <laughs> no, no, I'm trying to film! <laughs> I've had them for years, I've never ever got around to reading them. I finally, finally decided to do that. So I put my three choices into order and number three came up and that was Potion Study. So I was really pleased with that because it also meant that I could use the sequel, which was Magic Study, because for the journalist slash writer career, I can't remember what the two owls were. History of Magic and Muggle Studies, I think. The third choice for it was you could pick any other owl that you wanted to do. So I just went through all the prompts to see which one. I wanted something different, um, one that kind of caught my eye. But in the end, I decided to go for Herbology, which was to, which is such a random owl for that career. Like I was thinking about it afterwards. I thought, why did I choose Herbology? That would be no help for a journalist slash writer. But I chose Herbology because the prompt for it was to read a book that started with the letter M. So I figured, oh that's great, I can start Magic Study, the sequel to Potion Study. The story is about a girl named Elena. She has magical abilities in a place where magic is forbidden. She is in prison when we first meet her. It's in a kind of dystopian world, fantasy world. Uh, she's in prison when we first meet her and she gets the job of being the man in chief, the commander's food taster. So she's tasting his food for poisons and other such lovely, lovely things. So it kind of, it follows her adventure. She makes friends along the way. She falls in love. I did actually quite enjoy Potion Study. I think I gave it a three though because I thought, you know what, it was, I did enjoy it. But I mean, I'm only going to give it a three. Magic Study, however, I only gave a two because the story progresses on to Yelena finding her family. She goes to, she basically goes to wizarding school. She goes to Hogwarts. She goes to a citadel where the magicians, powerful magicians live and she's learning how to control her powers. She's still singing. That music is loud. Why does it always rain on me? My issue this time with Yelena, I mean, I had, I didn't, I didn't hate her in this book, but I did like her a lot more. I thought she was quite badass at times. There were times that she did get on my nerves a little bit, but in Magic Study, I just didn't, I just couldn't take to her and I didn't really take to any of the other characters. I felt like the characters in this book were the same as the ones in this book, but new names. But then the ones from this book came into this book and I just felt, there were times where I was just a big massive cringe fest and I'm not a massive fan of Valak. I don't want to spoil it, but he reminds me that if he's been written as this sort of like indestructible person, he's he's not magical, but he's immune to magic. So surely if you're immune to magic, that, I mean, that's kind of like Bella Swan. Edward couldn't read her thoughts. Why could he not read her thoughts? What was so special about Bella? Was it just that she didn't have any thoughts? But Valak was like that. He was like, he's immune to magic, but he's not a magician. He hates magic. He's this great assassin, but Yelena in this book, I just felt, she was one of those main characters that, oh my god, she's like, she doesn't know how to control her powers, she's learning, but she's, she's got special powers, she's special, she's a soul, what was it, soul finder I think it's called, which is so rare and oh my god I can't believe it and how has this power not killed you, she's one of those characters that everybody, even all these powerful magicians around her were dumb, they were just dumb, you know, they 
they'd say stuff to her like, I don't know how this power hasn't killed you yet. How, how are you able, how are you doing this? And she's like, I don't know how I'm doing this. I'm just doing it. I hate that. I really, I can't abide by that kind of character that I'd rather just see their experience and see them learning. And even if it's like through a montage, of them just learning and we start at day one and then we end at day 50 and it's like wow I'm an expert now. I'd prefer that hands down than just a character that's going about doing stuff and they're like how are you doing that? I don't know how I'm doing that. But she was one of those characters and I just, I don't know, I just feel like it's oh, so overplayed. It's just a bit kind of like ugh. And all the other magicians, they're supposed to be these powerful magicians and they were rubbish. And all the situations that kept happening, they were absolutely rubbish. They did nothing. Why are they so powerful? I don't know. I also didn't really understand the magic system. I think that is, is, as well was a problem for me. I just didn't really understand the magic system, how things were working, and the fact that like every time they used magic, like magic is basically like in this world, magic is a blanket over the world. In some places, the blanket's kind of frayed and there's no magic there, or there's a hole in the fabric, we'll say. And every time they wanted to use magic, they would, she would say, I, I pulled a thread of magic. And I'm just imagining like strings above her head every time she was doing that. Like I pulled the thread of magic, mentally pulling it. <laughs> I don't know. I just didn't really. I, 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 magic systems with me, I think, are a bit of a hit or miss. Like I love like basic magic, like in Harry Potter, when it's like wands and stuff. Like if they're saying spells or they they hold out their hand and they just, I don't know. Magic systems, though, they're. A little bit of a hair mess with me. I think it depends on how it's explained, how it's kind of done. But anyway, I'm getting off on a massive tangent about that book. But I gave it a three star and I gave it a two star. Originally, I gave this a four and I was going to give this a three, but then I decided no, this is eight. This ain't more than three, so I gave it a two and I dropped this rating to a three because I decided that you know maybe I didn't actually enjoy it as much as I thought I did. So that was my divination and herbology. <laughs> Why I chose herbology, I don't know. Oh, it is raining, it is raining. So my study was for the journalist slash writer career. So going back to my original, which was Seer, and my final owl for it was, because I did try to do it first and then move on to the rest. The final owl for it was Astronomy. And this prompt was that you could only read the majority of this book when it was dark outside. And honey, I read this whole book when it was dark outside. I got off to a bad start. <laughs> if you watched my magical readathon week one, every single day I said, I'm gonna start this book tonight, I'm gonna start tonight, and I never did. I never read it for the first 11 days or so, but my book for astronomy was Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, and probably wasn't the best choice to make for my nighttime read because it took me ages to start it. I think I just wasn't in the mindset to read that kind of classic book. I was more enjoying just reading all these. It didn't want to get around to it. I read the first two chapters and I remember I was a bit kind of like, oh God, this is going to take me forever to read this while I'm able to finish it. But then one night I stayed up quite late and I read a hundred pages. And then after that, it just, I fell into the story. I fell in love with it. I loved like our little unnamed heroine main character she was all right she was a bit gullible at times a little bit gullible and uh, her choices were they were a choice i'll tell you that they were a choice but uh hmm i did really enjoy this book it was different than i thought it was gonna be i mean i didn't i didn't know anything about this book going into it but i enjoyed it i very much enjoyed it i absolutely loved this book I got it in a charity shop for two pounds. I just love these kind of old style look at that shimmer. I just love this. I love this. I don't know if you want me to go into the plot of Rebecca. It's a young girl who gets married to this man. It's like twice her age but okay and she's haunted by Rebecca basically you may say figuratively. Figuratively? Literally. Figuratively. Figuratively? Am I using that word in the right sentence? And then things happen, as they normally do in books, things happen. It's a journey. But I enjoyed it. I gave it five stars because I thought I loved the writing style. It was easy to follow. And I read it all. I was able to read it all when it was dark outside, so I'm so pleased with that. You know what I've just realised? I'm fully almost Hermione with this here because it's a little bit bushy at the minute. I'm full on Hermione, like... Chamber of Secrets when she had her fringe. <laughs> Back to Rebecca. But I did really enjoy this book. I gave it five stars and it was it was good. It was great. Next up we have Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. This was Muggle Studies. 
a book told from the perspective of a muggle and I decided to go for Gone Girl because I had not yet read it and I'd been dying to read it and it was everything I thought it was going to be and more. I think I gave this five stars. The only thing that kind of let me down a little bit was the ending. I was a little bit disappointed by the ending but apart from that it was great. If you don't know Gone Girl, basically Ben Affleck's wife Rosamund Pike disappears and we don't know where she is. She's Gone Girl. She is. Good God, she is Gone Girl. <laughs> If you don't know Ben Affleck and Rosamund Pike were in the movie. Nick Dunn is our main character and his wife, Amy. Amy Dunn. She done gone. The puns. Nick is concerned about his wife, obviously. They had a bit of a... an odd relationship. No, I would say it's odd, but they definitely had a bit of a... a different relationship. She's definitely... I actually really like her. I actually really liked the character of Amy. I thought she was pretty badass. A bit kind of loopy though, to be perfectly honest. Is that a spoiler? Oops. But I definitely think she's pretty badass. And I actually really enjoyed this book. I did know quite a lot about it going in because I had seen like clips from the movie and I'm pretty sure I, I seen stuff about the ending but I wasn't quite sure. So I kind of went in with an open mind but a lot of stuff that I knew happened, happened. And so, hmm. But apart from that, it was very enjoyable. And I think I did give it five stars, but I did really enjoy it. It was, it was pretty good. I liked it a lot. Good God, girl. Get going. <laughs> good God, girl. Get going, girl. And finally, the last book that I read this month was a reread of a book that I had read years and years and years ago. It's probably been about 10 years, to be perfectly honest. But it was Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. This was for History of Magic, and it was to read a book with witches on um, witches or wizards and I figured well what bed I want to start with but I put on the philosopher's stone special concern it's the owl's magical read -thon. I had read these books years ago I remember getting them from the library I would check them out like one at a time I think I read them in reverse order though I, I remember I started with the Deathly Hallows and I finished with the philosopher's stone but I did get a set a lovely set of for my Christmas one year years ago and from it I read The Goblet of Fire, but I had actually still, I've actually still never read The Chamber of Secrets. So it's on my TBR for me, because I figured I'm gonna just reread the whole series. And I might do some reviews on these because I have some opinions of The Philosopher's Stone going back into it now. And obviously I've seen the movies like countless times, but having only read the books once, I figured now, now that I've read The Philosopher's Stone again, I might do like a review, just kind of talking about it a little bit, because I do have some thoughts, some opinions. We shall see. I mean, you know Harry Potter and The Philosopher's Stone, Sorcerer's Stone, to those of you in America. Is it just America they changed it, or did they change it worldwide? Philosopher's Stone to you and me, Brits, over here. Why did they change it? I don't know. You know this story. It's Harry Potter, the boy who lived in the cupboard under the stairs. He finds out he's a wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> that was my Hagrid impression. He finds out he's a wizard and he goes to a magical school called Hogwarts. It's great, it's a blast, it's school, and things happen. That is, why do I always say that about books? Things happen, but things happen. A lot of things happen and there's a philosopher's stone and someone trying to steal it. Oh. It was a pretty good pick. I did really enjoy it. So that is my, those are my reads. Oh, that's actually quite an impressive pile when I see it like that. Oh, I did work it out. I read 2,230 pages, so that's quite nice to know. But yeah, so that is, that is everything. That is it. It's the owls. Just call me Hermione Granger. Wait, wait, wait. It's in the box. I can't, I'm not gonna get it out of the box, but. <sighs> Expecto Patrona. That looks ridiculous. That's my other one. I got it the same time as I got my books. Ain't it pretty? It's so pretty. I love it. I want all the wands. If I had like a spare room, I would turn it into a library. Just walls of books. I would totally dedicate like a whole shelf just to Harry Potter wands. So, that is everything from Dangerous Women to boys who lived. It's been a good month. Oh. <laughs> so at least I read everything for my owls. I'm a little bit disappointed I didn't read anything else, but I mean, this kept me busy. I didn't, I couldn't read too much to be perfectly honest. I mean, I would have nothing left to read by now. So thank you so much for watching this 
video and I shall see you in my next one whatever that may be <laughs> oh goodness that looks good you can't see it because of the glare from that light